So I am out on location by the river doing a photo shoot and I have Anastasia <laughs> with me and she has the coolest accent you've ever heard in your entire life. Hi! I'm meeting! <laughs> We are shooting by the river. I got the D800 with me with the 85 and the new Godox X Pro trigger. We have AD360 and a four foot softbox there. And I don't know if you can, yeah, there it is. We have a speed light just acting as a rim light to provide a bit of background separation. <coughs> it is really, really humid today. Really, really humid. Uh, first thoughts on the X Pro. It doesn't, we, this is weird because with the X1T for Nikon, as soon as you go into high speed sync mode, the flash just, or the trigger rather, automatically goes into high speed sync. This one doesn't, you actually have to press the button on the top. But we've just shot a few down by the water. Put this back down. We just shot a few by the water of Anastasia sat there. And no doubt one will pop up in the video about now. And, uh, now we're gonna have a drink and then find a new spot to shoot. All right, I need to go and move a light. This is not gonna be easy because the ground, we're on a hill. So, yeah, that's gonna fall. I need to get it up there. Actually, let me see if I'm gonna put you down, hold on. Anastasia just had a phone call. So what we're gonna do is, while she's having a phone call, I'm just gonna walk you around and show you what we're doing and what all the lights are doing. So again, we got the D800 with the 8518 and the new Godox X Pro trigger. Inside that big box, we have a Godox AD360 Mark II. And this is 120 centimeters or four foot. And I haven't put the grid on it because uh, we haven't really needed to, we'll just feather it off. We have the E360 VR shooting behind the scenes footage as well as this camera shooting behind the scenes footage and then we have a Godox TT600 sitting up the stairs or up the steps acting as a rim light on Anastasia down there so that when I shoot from over there this just gives a nice highlight down this backside and then this box there it is it flips it around so it's mirrored and I'm not used to that so this softbox is like is short lighting Anastasia's face. That's it, that's the walk through the set. Now I'm gonna put you back down and shoot some more. All right, so it is actually starting to get quite dark here, but I just had a message from Kev, who's somewhere on the other side of the river. So hopefully he's gonna circle back and meet us here. What did you think? It was really good, I liked it. <laughs> you had fun? Huh? You had fun? Yeah, thank you. That accent. I had lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like Northwest Russian. <laughs> I am Russian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Kev is gonna be here any minute, apparently. He hasn't texted me again, so I'm assuming he's on his way. I can, I can hear a vehicle coming past that sounds like it might be his. I've not had another message yet, so we'll see when he gets here because he's bringing another light with him and then we're heading wherever. So a few thoughts on the X-Pro trigger. It is definitely a huge improvement over the X1. Absolutely, but sorry, I'm, I'm making sure I don't fall on my ass. And these rocks are a bit slippy. Yeah, it's definitely a big improvement over the X1, but the controls do take a little getting used to. But once they're in, they're, they're in, they're easy to adjust. You can knock all the power to all the groups up or down at will. And it'll cap out when one of them hits maximum or one of them hits minimum, which is very, very nice. I, I, I mentioned before about having to hit the high speed sync button to send it into high speed six. Yeah, I'll try that again. I mentioned before about the high speed sync button and having to hit it to actually enter into high speed sync. And that's not as bad as I, uh, as I first felt that it was. It, it's a lot more useful because it means that when you are using older strobes or anything like that with whatever receivers that don't support high speed sync, you can stop your camera making black bars, which is pretty cool. 
The TTL to manual function worked great. I was using it with the AD360 because it was the only light that I had that, that supports TTL. The others that I had with me are TT600, which don't. The problem I found though was that TTL was overexposing the shot. I didn't want to have to mess around dialing an exposure compensation, so I just did a long press on the TCM button and it converted it to a manual recording and then I knocked it down about two thirds of a stop and it was right. So as far as using TTL, I'm still not really going to use TTL to expose a shot, but I will be using TTL more at the beginning of a session just to get the flash somewhere in the ballpark because then I know, you know, I'm. If I whack it on at half power and I take a test shot and it's overblown and I knock it down a quarter, take a test shot, knock it down to an eighth, take a test shot, it, 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 all right, it's only gonna be a minute or two, but doing it with TTL, do the TTL to manual, knock it down two thirds of a stop or a stop, I'm, I'm there in like five seconds. So it's definitely gonna save some time at the beginning of a shoot, even if I don't use it all the time in a shoot. And Anastasia's up there having a break. And uh, hopefully Kevin will be here in a minute and then I don't know where we're going because he was talking about Lancaster Music Festival but I, I, I want to go to some other woods with a little stream running through that isn't like eight feet higher than it's supposed to be so we'll see where we're gonna go next but now I'm heading back up this way packing up the rest of my gear and waiting for Kev we just finished our part of shirt I might be him and we're walking back to the car park <laughs> I don't know why bad people can speak. I think, I think that is it. It's him. Go on, point it that way. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Dave. Hi. Kev, Anastasia. Anastasia. Hello, Anastasia. Nice how are you doing? You. Many thanks to my new camera person. <laughs> and Kev's here. So. Carry your bag. Yeah, he's, he came to help carry my bags for me. So I don't know where we're heading now. We're going to go and shoot something somewhere. If Can we get to the water down the other side? Oh yeah, of course we can. There's people there, walking dogs. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to go to the other side of the river and uh, let's see what's up over there. Well, yeah, they're all stealing my jelly babies. <laughs> oh, the drums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we will see you on the other side of the river. There's only one left, only one. I've got two, so one for your light and one for mine. So we are at the train station, or the old train station in Holton. And we're gonna test out a little bit more with the TCM function on the X-Pro trigger because I've got my AD360 Mark II and Kev has brought his AD600 along with him. And we're gonna try it out and see how well it performs with more than one light of different uh, powers. There is a house in New Orleans They call the rising sun and it's been so right And I have a boom And can find a new So it is getting dark but we are set up We have the AD360 in there We have the AD600 in there And um, we're going to set them up and just fire off a few See how well the TTL does And uh, see if it will convert them both to manual And keep the same power on both of them So the shoot is over, it's actually been over for a few days. It got a little bit too late on the day to wrap up and I planned to do it the next day but then I woke up the next morning and it looked like this. And it stayed like this all day and yes the camera's set to daylight white balance. Then it did this and then it turned into this for the rest of the week. So today's the first day that we've had any kind of half decent weather to actually get out and do anything. I've come out today because I'm finishing off my review of the E360 VR which you can check out on DIYphotography.net in a couple of days if it's not already up by the time this video goes up. But I wanted to wrap up the shoot a little bit, talk a tiny bit about the TTL to manual. Long story short, I only have one model of light that supports TTL and that's the AD360 Mark II. When I was using just that one model of light, I tell it to go TTL, it got the exposure where it thought it wanted to be and then I converted it over to manual and it stayed exactly the same level of exposure. Then Kevin showed up a little bit later with his AD600 and when we added that into the mix things got a little bit strange. We had the AD600 in a four foot umbrella and then the AD360 in a four foot umbrella as a rim light and 
the TTL metering tended to blow out the rim light even though it got the AD600 pretty spot on. But TTL I found just never really seems to work very well with rim lights anyway. But when I hit the TTL to manual button for a long press, the AD600 power level stayed exactly where it was but the AD360 lost about a stop. Which makes sense because if you tell the AD600 to fire at half power or if you think you're telling the AD600 to fire at half power but you're actually telling an AD360 to fire at half power you're gonna lose about a stop. But it still doesn't make sense to me why the trigger even needs to know what model light you're using. So I have a Godox X1R on the way. Well actually it's the Pixar Pro version of the X1R. Thank you Pixar Pro. And when that arrives I will be testing it with an SB900 to see how that compares to using a Godox TTL speed light which should also hopefully be on the way soon. Um, and then once I can get a bit more of an in-depth look at it I'll put up another video and try and explain it. But until then thank you guys for tagging along on the shoot and I will see you on the next one.